Hello everyone, XQ Crafting here. Welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. Today I'm gonna be showing you how I transformed this little chair, office chair from Walmart into a little higher, bigger and more comfortable chair, at least in my opinion. I started unscrewing the seat from the legs of the chair, which is like in wheels. And I didn't want it to dis disturb the screws, like the holes that came with the original screws. So what I did, I just put a piece of wood on top of it. And that's unnecessary if you just wanted to add stuffing on top of the um, seat, original seat. But in my case, I wanted it to be a little bit bigger, just a tiny bit. I would make it even bigger but I didn't have enough wood <laughs> so that's the piece I had so it was not big enough but it was a little bit bigger than the original seat and that's what I use but if you don't you're not planning to do anything um, not make it bigger or anything like that you can just put more stuffing on the original seat but I like I said I sacrificed the stuffing that was already in the seat because I wanted to make a tiny bit bigger so I used that piece of plywood that I had and then I screw it to the original seat because again, I didn't want it to disturb the, the screws that already came in the chair. That's why I didn't put it on the bottom. And I have that um, little blanket there. It's, I believe it's for quilters. So I bought that at Walmart and I had it already. So and I used that as a base just to put more stuffing. And that stuffing is to filled stuffed animals and pillows and stuff like that I already had that if you were planning to do this with um, stuff uh, stuffing foam it would be a lot easier I just wanted to work with what I already had at home that's why I, I'm using those materials you're gonna see that I'm just gonna staple the um, that little blanket there into the seat with stuffing on the bottom but that's not it's gonna be it's not gonna be fluffy enough that's gonna be kind of hard so i'm just gonna take that apart and i'm gonna use that small cushion and i'm gonna put that as well instead of just the, the, the white stuffing and then i'm gonna fit kind of in a way that it looks kind of round it would take the shape of the seat and then i will staple it down that is just the base. I will use another fabric to cover it up. And you see it doesn't go all the way to the top there to um, stapled. It's totally fine. It's just because when I measured, I didn't think about putting more stuff in there. So now that it's a lot higher, it won't go all the way up to staple the sides as well. But that's fine. And I have this fabric which is stretchy just to one side. And it's not wide enough, so I'm gonna do to one side to the other where it stretches pretty well, and then I'll cut it and then cross it to the other side. That's the only way I can use this fabric and still uh, staple everything to the chair. Like I said, this is a stretchy fabric, but it's just stretched to one side. And this is not the fabric you will see. It, the fabric that you will see is the pink one, which I'm gonna attempt <laughs> to sew to make like a little cover for my chair. But this is just like the base so I can have everything secured. And I'm like kind of folding the edges of the fabric there so it can hold and not snap like and, and rip apart because of the staple. Because you know, I'm stretching that fabric. So it's good on one side, but then you see the other side, the fabric couldn't go around. So I'm just gonna cross it and then make sure I cover the other side. And I know it looks a little bit sloppy, but this is gonna be hiding. Just because I had to improvise with the materials I had and I didn't really, like I said, buy anything extra. Just wanted to use the material I had on hand. It looks a little bit sloppy, but it's going to be hiding. Nobody's going to see it. Only I know that's look like that. And you. <laughs> it's a lot fluffier than it was before. A lot more comfortable, in my opinion. And then I also wanted to fix the like backrest. 
and I used that chipboard from a, the back of a calendar. I thought that was gonna be long enough and strong enough to hold just to make the backrest a little bit prettier also. I don't know what I was thinking. That's too small. <laughs> it's too fragile too. So what I did, I will still use that as a base, but I'm gonna use cardboard to actually make the back rest. So I just um, loosen up the screws a little bit on the chair so I can put that chipboard towards the, the bottom there so it can fit. I cut it in a way that it will fit under the chair in between those screws there. But that's just gonna be a little tiny base. It's not gonna be really the, what supports the back. So since I know it's not gonna be enough, so I use a small cardboard box. I cut, cut it in half and I'm gonna attach that to the chair. I used packing tape, the transparent one, but it's better to use duct tape. I would suggest using duct tape because right now I can rest my back on the chair, but it makes a little bit of a plasticky noise. It doesn't bother me, but it might bother you. So I'm just giving you a heads up. You might want to use duct tape instead of the packing tape that it has kind of a plasticky sound to it when you touch it. So I did that. I just wrap it the cardboard around the chair and just to make like a stronger base. And I'm going to use the two parts of the box. If I have thought better, I would take out that back part of the chair, the springy part that it connects the bottom, like the seat to the backrest. Just because that is a plastic thing. Um, I don't know the name for that, but you see that back um, material that connects the top to the bottom. That's just a cover. It's not really supporting anything. It's just to cover the metal part inside. That made it so bulky. If I had thought about it, I would take it out. But I, I just realized after I had wrapped the cardboard around the chair and I really didn't want to undo it. So I just left it. I just fold it a little bit and then I wrap it again with packing tape and that's gonna make the the backrest a little bit even it's gonna make the backrest stronger and not so high I didn't want it to be so high up but it, you can definitely leave it like that if you want to I just didn't think it was necessary and then I'm gonna use the other part of the the box and wrap it around the cardboard and the chair that is already there and the bottom part is gonna be a little bit like it's gonna be sticking out, which is totally fine. But I will fold it in just to look a little bit rounder. But I'll tell you, that took me a little bit. I even used glue, hot glue, to keep it like uh, attached, like the, the back cardboard to the front one. So the chair doesn't look so square. But you can definitely leave it squared if you want. It's really up to you. And then I did the same thing. I folded the one on the back just to be at the same height as the one on the front. And then when I'm, I'm not gonna use the packing tape around like I did before, I'm just gonna go up and over. But you can definitely just wrap around like you did the other one. I don't know why I thought that was gonna hold any different, but I just did it that way. And that's what I'm, I'm saying that I did pull the back part of the cardboard a little bit forward and attached to the front one so just it look a little bit rounder the edges of the chair doesn't look so sharp because i'm gonna put a cover a pink cover over it before i do that though i will also use the same stuffy material on the backrest so it's comfortable the back rest is complete. I'm just gonna unscrew the seat part again because I know where everything is gonna go now and that without the seat I, it makes things easier for me to do put the stuffing. Like uh, I said I didn't want to buy anything new to put in the chair and you just use what I already had. So I'm just using whatever leftover I have of that material, that little blankie there to cover the backrest and then I were gonna make like a little pocket so I can stuff the uh, material inside 
but and it, it took me a little bit i think that was the longest part that was the t- took the longest to finish because i would not just randomly put the stuff in, in that little pocket i'm making i would just try to make kind of even so it wouldn't look so like crazy it would look kind of a, like a backrest of a chair but if you use stuffing foam it would make things a lot easier and it will not take that long to finish you can still use that blanket to cover the stuffing foam if you want to but like i said you will not take this long it took me the longest in this part just because i was um making and trying to make it as even as possible but it still have something comfortable to rest my back on and then i just glue it the blanket with hot glue and then i'm adjusting everything again and this is a reminder to consider subscribing everybody if you like my videos you might want to click the bell notification below the video and activate the notification for all and you won't miss any of my videos and i got that pink fabric and a joann's and it was also cheap but it's a very good fabric i'm sorry i don't know the name i'm not really a seamstress i i horrible at sewing i really don't know how to do it but i try anyways so the fabric is very stretchy to both sides and it's not see-through so that's perfect so i just wrap it around and more or less thought how much i'm gonna use and i'm gonna just make like a little baggy it's gonna look like a little baggy like a pillowcase for for my backrest and that's what i'm gonna do I thought that was the best, like the easiest way for me that doesn't know how to sew, um, how to make like the the backrest cover. So I'm gonna do that. I'm just pinning it down where I wanted to cut it, how long I need it, kind of measured what I need it, and then I of course cut it like a lot longer than I need it. And I didn't care so so much about how wide it was gonna be because like i said the fabric is very stretchy but it's not see-through so i just left enough to cover the backrest and not feel so tight and snuggled and fitting every imperfection in the chair but still not to worry that it will be too small because i know the fabric is stretchy so i just did that and then i cut it and then I sew it. One side is folded, but because I had this sewing uh, line in one side, I decided to sew on both. So even though I didn't need it to sew on the folded side, I still did, just so the both sides of the chair looks very similar. And on the top, I just made it like the edges round, so it fits my chair because the the edges of my backrest is a little bit rounder. It's not sharp. It's not like a square. And then at the bottom, I just um, sew it and left a space towards the bottom where I could fit a ribbon and that's the reason why is because I wanted to take it out and wash it if it ever gets dirty and I'm doing the same thing for the seat part and I'm just using whatever was left for of just one side of the fabric and you're gonna see that it's not gonna be a hundred percent round which is totally fine to me I do apologize to all the symmetries out there that knows how to, to sew, I just don't. I'm just trying and I just wanted to be able to do a cover for my seat <laughs> and I wanted to be pink. So I just cut the corners there. I'm gonna fold it and then cut the corners. Like I said, it's not gonna be around a uh, round, 100% round, but it still worked out fine. So once I cut the corners, I will sew around the circle, but I will leave a space so I can fit elastic through it. So I can just put like a little, it's gonna look like a little shower cap to my seat. And that's what I did. It's the easiest for me, so that's what I did. Um, but you see, that's not elastic, that's just a ribbon for my little backrest cover that's a, a ribbon i can just tie it like below the chair on the bottom and the elastic that you've seen it is a little bit bigger than i needed it i just cut it like bigger and that's how it looks with with the elastic i'm just like uh, 
putting the the cover the the seat cover first before I attach to the chair the chair uh, legs or wheels and you see it's very snuggled I that's exactly what I want I didn't want it to be too loose the the fabric is not see-through so it's perfect and that's how it looks like so I'm just gonna attach to the the legs and then I'm just gonna cover the backrest with my little um, baggie that I made <laughs> that I'm so proud of <laughs> so I'm just covering that up and then I'll tie it at the bottom and you cannot even see all the imperfections and all the sewing part it looks nice in my opinion and the main reason why I did this is not just for aesthetic the counter that I created in my previous video I it was a little bit too high for the chair so I needed to be a little bit higher that's why I did all this process and I didn't want to buy a new chair so I had the material and I did it myself so that's it I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you give it me a thumbs up if you did please consider subscribing share with your friends if you like maybe they're looking for an idea to work like on an old chair they have maybe if they don't do the whole process they can at least try to just cover up with a fabric so well take care everybody Bye!